Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, welcome back to our series of lectures. You remember that in our previous lecture, I had uh, described the mesh-free algorithm. So, let us, uh, for the linear advection equation, let us rewrite again what I am going to solve. So, I am going to solve del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x is equal to 0. In minus 3 to 3, so this is my domain, initial condition rho 0 x I define as, so since I am doing, I, I want to show the, the advection, so I take a little bit longer, so minus 3 less equal to x less equal, so is equal to 0, if it is minus 3 less equal to x less equal to 0, sine of pi x if 0 less equal to x less equal to 1, 0 if 1 less equal to x less equal to 2. So, so we had to express Lagrangian form. So, the one was dx by dt is equal to a, in that case you remember or it is a characteristics so which we had in earlier lecture in the beginning. So, d rho by dt is equal to 0. So, the discrete form dxi by dt is equal to 0, d rho i by dt is equal to 0. So, then the explicit Euler scheme for time integration. So, this was x i n plus 1 is equal to x i n plus delta t of a and rho i n plus 1 is equal to rho i n because it is 0, it is a constant. So, this was our Lagrangian form. So, here we did not have to do anything else, but we have this ALA formulation, arbitrary Euler and Lagrangian. So, I just write in discrete form. So, what we had, we had dxi by dt is equal to a by 2, d rho i by dt is equal to minus a by 2 del rho by del x. So, the explicit explicit Euler scheme is x i of n plus 1 is x i of n. So, here plus delta t times 
a by 2 rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n it is minus delta t times a by 2 del rho n by del x at time step i. So, this is the arbitrary Eulerian Lagrangian formulation. Now, I will exactly implement this scheme and this scheme in the MATLAB. Let us see uh, so the MATLAB code how we can implement. I hope you can reproduce the same result what I will show in, in the MATLAB code. Okay, now let us come to the MATLAB code. So, so here my domain minus 3 to 3 and I am going to solve exactly this one. And this is my initial condition. Yeah. So, so it is same as what we have done, uh, the numerical computation of the derivative or, or the, the interpolation with a moving least square method. So, we just define our domain. So, minimum and maximum, we define our number of grid point or particle. So, we define what should be the, 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 the grid size, the distance between the particle to be generated. So, either regular or irregular, we have seen it. So, I am not going to repeat it again. So, I define the edge, the radius of the neighbor searching distance. So, I compute about t is equal to 1 or I can compute longer. So, this is the alpha what I use the constant for the weight function. So, this is the velocity, the a I define as 1. So, I can give also minus 1 or anything. And now I use the CFL condition, like just like 0.5. So, you can play also with yourself. So, I generate the point here. And then after I generate the point, I use the discrete form of the initial condition. So, initial condition is that, yeah, this is a discrete form. If x is less equal to 0, then my rho old, the old value because I have the rho old is the rho n and rho new is rho n plus 1. Then I just define if it is between 0 and 1, it is sign pi of x and the rest, the rest is 0. So, these are just initialization. Now, I start with a time loop. So, that we don't need at the moment. So, I run if t less equal to t final. So, what do I have that first of all, so here I have to do nothing. So, my x new is x old plus delta t times the velocity. And my rho new is just rho old. So, that, there is nothing to do. And then, but what we will have that once the particle move, so we, I may have to, if they are coming very close, I will remove. If they are going very far, I will add. So, that I have mentioned it in the beginning. So, I will not go into detail how to, this is a very technical problem. So, that one can do by himself or herself. So, here this part, I do the particle management. I remove the point and here if they are making a hole, they are far away from each other, I am just adding the point. And after that, I assign the old value as a new value. So, once I compute the new value and uh, of x and rho and after the time, after I, the, the computation of new value, I put back again my old value is equal to the new value. And then I do the incrementation of time, t is equal to t plus delta t. So, my time loop is finished. So, let us see. So, in this case, that because since it is, we, we know that it is a, the constant, it is just moving with the initial frame. So, we should get the exact solution. Let us check the simulation. So, it is so, you see finally, what this is the red is a numerical solution and the blue is exact solution. There is nothing has been lost because we have not approximated any derivative. 
So what we could have done that we have added, you see that I have added some point here. If you look here, so I have added some point or I have removed some point. So if I have added, I have done the interpolation. There I have little bit, so interpolation is I have done very zeroth order. So this is uh, therefore I may get little bit. But if I increase my, my resolution, I get even. So just let it start with 200 point. I should get a better solution. So it is depending upon so here. So I have to give here maybe 200. This is the problem. Or if I give I n, this should be fine. So this is plotting the numerical overlapping the numerical and exact solution. Oh, it is giving that problem. So let's give. This one. So, so it's, it is better than the 100. Now, if I give my, I give the velocity other way around. So just plus one instead of plus one, I just give the minus one. So it is moving like this. Yeah. So I can give also like uh, what we have seen in the Burger equation that I can give some the linear profile. So here I can redefine. Let us try. I just redefine if it is less equal to zero, I give it one. If it is uh, zero to one, I give one minus x the rest zero. So I give the constant following linearly and zero. So let us see that whether we get just shifting the linear profile further or not. Okay, so let us start with the new another initial condition. So instead of the sine function, so I am just commenting it. So I just define if just like I give the linear profile. If it is negative, I have a constant velocity or constant rho. If 0 to 1, I just switch, I had used for the, so then it is linearly falling down 1 minus x, which I have used for the Burger equation to see the shock. And then after that, uh, we just do, uh, we have a 0 velocity. So this is 0, it is if negative, it is 1. If greater than 0 and less than 1, it is 1 minus x. And if it is the right hand side of the other part is zero, so just let us say that. Uh, so my velocity is. Uh, let me give the positive plus one. So, so it is just, it doesn't change. So you remember that in the Burger equation we have got a shock, because when we got a shock, because this was the nonlinear equation. So in all nonlinear equation. Whether you start with the continuous function, it will develop the shock. But here, this is the linear advection equation. It is just constant along the characteristics. It is a constant. So this, this is the exact solution is different because it was for the sine function. Let us comment it. So again, let us run. So this is just simply convecting the initial profile it doesn't change so if i give the the another value here so if i give the velocity as equal to minus one yeah if i give the negative velocity then it should move to the left yeah so linear profile moves to the left so now this is here it has not much effort to do that now let us come to ala formulation so let us come to this formulation. So here, what I have to do that I have to compute at every time step the partial derivative of rho with respect to x. So let us do that. We have already seen in the finite difference uh, simulation that any central difference scheme gives the instabilities, whether it is a linear or nonlinear. Now let us say with the same frame same initial condition what I have done for for this case 
let us say how it is. Now, you see the problem. This is the oscillation here. So, we have seen similar phenomena in the central difference scheme in the final difference. Yeah. Now, it is also the same. So, I start with a very continuous function, but I start getting oscillation. So, if I give the negative value, it should give, it also gives the same, let us check, if I move to the opposite direction, so here also I get the oscillation. So, what will happen if I select my, maybe it is due to the large time step. So, let us take our CFL number 0 0.1, very small, what will happen? Yeah. So, it does not matter. If you decrease your time step, it does not help. Yeah, it is still oscillating. Now, let us increase the resolution. So, it take more point, what will happen again? So, it, instead of 100, I take 200 point. So, more resolution also gives the, the oscillation in the solution. So, here what I have again the oscillation. Yeah. So, let us come to the end. So, here I cannot because I have this, uh, so I have to define 200 point or 100. So, the exact solution was not plotting. So, let me. Just Rerun again for 100 points. So, this is very bad. You see, the exact solution is like this, but I am, we are getting the oscillation here. Yeah. So, this is the effect of any finite difference, any central difference scheme, because I have explained that if our approximation is also like a central difference, I am sitting at this center point, looking never on the left, looking never on the right. From both sides of neighbor, I am doing the Taylor expansion, so I am minimizing the overdetermined system. So in in the, the finite difference, I had left point, right point, and center point. So I have now left neighbor, right neighbor, and center point itself as a neighbor. So it is exactly the finite generalized finite difference central based on the central difference approximation. So. Again, remember all the central difference uh, for uh, the approximation scheme are unstable. Whether you increase your time, decrease your time step, or decrease your resolution, it doesn't help much. So, this was just, just skip it. Now, so instead of avoiding the oscillation, what do we do? So, we do the upwinding, what we have done in the finite difference. So, I have described yesterday itself. So, we approximate this first derivative based on the upwinding. So, upwinding means uh, that I will be having, so upwinding means uh, that what I will have that, uh, so I am sitting at this point i, so I have the neighbor on left and right itself. So, if a is positive, I take the, because the information coming from this side, I take the, all the neighbor which are on the left of this one, I consider it as a neighbor point. In the finite difference, I had i, i minus 1, but now I consider all the left point, and if it is, uh, if A is a negative, so information coming from here, so I take this as a neighbor for the negative value of A. So, now let us see the code, how I have done that. So, all the setup are the same. So, nothing has been changed. And now, so, here I run for, so I start my time, time loop. So, I run for all points, then I search for the neighbor, so order of n square, this is a very lengthy. And now, I select the upwind point. So, now what I do that, so from the neighbor list, I again sort out, so my new number of neighbor 
in the, the left or right is nb1. So if the velocity a is positive, so it means I am going from left to right. So I consider all the value, all the neighbors which are less or equal to this xi. This is the part here. So if the velocity is negative, yeah, if the velocity is uh, negative, it means the information is coming from there to here. So I take all the neighbors, including itself, which are on the right part. Yeah. So I take all the neighbors, if it is neighbors are larger than or equal to this value old, uh, this x, then I consider it as a neighbor. And now everything fine, same as before, how to compute the derivative. Once we know the neighbor, just minimize the linear system, minimize the overdetermined system, we get the linear system. So since it is a first order, we don't have to invert the matrix, we get explicitly the derivative. And then we just plug this derivative into this, the ordinary differential equation in the time dependent ODE. And then what I do now, my x new is x old plus 0 0.5 delta t times velocity. So this part x old, so it is x n plus 1 is x new plus is equal to x of old plus delta t times velocity by 2. So 0 0.5 times velocity times delta t here. Now my rho nu at time at the, the particle index i rho nu is equal to rho old of i minus because this is the minus here. So delta t times a by 2 times rho x, yeah, derivative of rho at this point i, so which I have already stored here. Yeah. So this I just plug that rho x of i here. And then so here I do not move my boundary point. I want to fix the boundary point so that I can assign the boundary condition. So I just put my I do not move. So my because here I have already moved all points. So here I just put it back. So other side on the right it is almost zero. Maybe here there is not moving when there was a linear profile, so it was moving. So at the moment, this example, this initial condition, it doesn't help. But when you have something like I have shown in the earlier case that if it is linear, so the velocity was one on the boundary. So there I have to put, I have to fix the velocity. I have to give the inflow boundary condition. I just keep the same position. And now, so here after I move, after I, I move, I compute the new quantity, I do the particle management, add or remove the particle. So here I remove the particle if they are very close. And here I add the particle if they are far away. And now finally I just assign my old value as a new value. So the x old is the x new and rho old is rho new. And then I go back to my, then I do the increment of time and then go back. So until I do the, the loop. So now let us see the situation. Now what I have, I have now velocity positive. So it should be the backward difference. Let us take our solution. So here, so this case, we got exact solution. Yeah, so here, this case, why we did not get the exact solution here with the same resolution? Because we made a small mistake here. So there is a numerical diffusion. So that numerical diffusion has destroyed or has somehow made our solution a little bit far from the exact solution. So that case, for example, if I increase my my number of grids. So what will happen? So here I have to increase also exact solution. Let us, because there is an error. So I have to give my value here also maybe 200. So then I should get the exact solution. So it is better. 
So if I go, for example, if I increase 400, so here, so if I give 400, I should get better resolution. So I am almost close. So in order to get the exact, so you have to do, you have to do more refinement. So take more point. So if you take a more point, automatically what will happen? You have to pay the price that you have to compute longer because your time delta t is a function of delta x. Yeah. So if n is larger, delta x is smaller, and then if delta x is smaller, our dt also getting smaller. Yeah. So now let us do with the negative path. If I take the velocity, so let me start with the 100 point. So if I take my negative velocity here, so the wave, it moves from right to left. So here I also have to give for exact solution, same grids. So if the velocity is negative, I am going to that side. So what you have seen that, in the central difference, we got the oscillation. Either it is going positive or negative. If we decrease the time step, it was also oscillating. If you, we refine your grid, it was also still oscillating. But in the case of upwinding, exactly same as in the final difference, we do not have any oscillation. So let us increase our resolution. Let me show that now if I take, if I take the initial condition, like which I have before here. So linear profile, let us check what we'll, what we'll see, whether we get, uh, so whether the linear profile moves or not. So I have to, so now I just uh, comment uh, the exact solution. So we can also reconstruct the exact solution here. It is just the shifting with x minus uh, v times t. So, just linear profile is going, but if we got the, in the previous case, we got the exact solution. So here, let us take that with the pure Lagrange. In this case, the solution was exact, but here, in this case, what we see that there is the smearing. It is a smearing comes from the first order Open all the first order upwinding scheme. If you look the the theory in the finite difference, all first order upwinding scheme has a numerical diffusion. So that is nothing else. This numerical diffusion gives us that some smoothness in that corner. So if I run that because here we do not have any upwinding approximation, no central difference. So we should get exact solution. Just take in this uh, situation that. So we get very sharp corner what we have generated in the beginning. So once more, yeah. So but if we have this opening scheme, we got the numerical diffusion. So this you can improve if you increase your resolution, if you increase your maybe 400 points, so what we will see, we get better resolution. You see the corner is a little bit sharper than earlier. If you want to get even more sharper, just like a more sharp corner, so you have to get more resolution, but you cannot get exactly sharp like in this case, yeah? So I think we stop our, uh, this numerical implementation in the MATLAB uh, this today, and next I will, solve the viscous form, the, the advection diffusion equation. So in the next lecture, I show also the MATLAB code. So thank you very much.